Hey everyone, how's it going? For today's video, I'm proud to present an up-close and personal in-depth look and drive of the all-new 2015 Cadillac Escalade. And this is going to be a detailed, in-depth review of the Escalade. We'll start up show the engine, get an exhaust clipping over the performance data, take an our detailed test drive, and show you many of the unique aspects of both the interior as well as exterior. And before we begin, I'd like to extend a big thanks and special shout out to Flow Cadillac located in Winston-Salem, North Carolina for providing the Escalades featured in today's in-depth review. For more information on their dealership, including contact info and current inventory, feel free to check out their website provided in the description box below. And so, without further ado, let's go ahead and start her up, let her run. As you can see, remote start does come standard. Standard equipment for 2015 is a remote smart key access system with a little button on all four door handles that lock and lock the vehicle. All you have to do is just keep the key fob within your pocket and just tap the button once to lock. Then after waiting a second, tap the button again, once to unlock the driver's door, once more to unlock the rest of the doors. This particular Escalade is finished in white diamond paired with a premium perforated shale leather interior. Dark cocoa brown is accented here and there with American walnut wood, Alcantara strips, and Galvano chrome. The standard Escalade could also be had with a jet black or Kona brown leather interior, in addition to two unique interior themes for the platinum model. In order to start, along with that smart key entry system, the new Escalade also features standard push-button ignition. Just make sure the key fob is within the interior of the vehicle, put your foot on the brake, and hit the little console mount a button to start. The new Escalade ditches hydraulic steering for a more efficient speed proportional electrically assisted rack and pinion design. The multifunction heated steering wheel is wrapped entirely out of premium hand stitched leather with color accent cross stitching versus the previous leather wood combo. Definitely befitting of a Cadillac with beautiful detailing such as galvano chrome wrapping around the spokes and airbag cover and high gloss wood and black veneer. If you've ever driven the previous generation, you'll realize just how different the new Escalade drives. Just like before, it's still a large vehicle, but it now handles much like a smaller one. The electric steering I thought was appropriately weighted and responsive, if not somewhat isolated in terms of road feel. It's comfortable, easy to maneuver around the bins for its size, and actually offers two suspension modes, one of which firms up the shocks for a tighter overall feel, in addition to mitigating body roll. The ride is far smoother thanks to magnetic ride control, but more on that a little later in the video. Reshaped aerodynamics lead to a quieter interior overall that's further assisted by Bose active noise cancelling. In addition to redesigned doors, the side view mirrors also have a different shape. I think they're pretty cool looking. They also work to reduce turbulence at the front, so you'll likely notice a decrease in wind noise. Obviously with a vehicle of this size and proportions, you're still going to get a little bit of wind noise here and there, especially on the relatively windy day that I was filming, but it's far better and you'll likely not even notice it in regular driving. 
Speaking from experience, as someone who's owned and driven a number of GM's full-size SUVs over the years, this is by far the most refined riding body-on-frame sport you'd I've driven to date. The difference is nearly night and day, especially when it comes to mitigating the chassis shake and whatnot. It's very composed over multiple different types of road surfaces. When the 2015s first started rolling out, they were equipped with the GM's Hydromatic 6L80 6-speed automatic. But with a recent mid-year update, all Escalades as well as other full-size GM SUVs and trucks that carry the 6.2-liter V8 are now fitted with the updated 8L90 8-speed automatic as standard equipment. The Escalade also gains a surround view camera system with adaptive guidance lines to help aid in parking. The compact gearbox is similar in size with the 6-speed, but features a wider overall gear ratio spread, in addition to a taller first gear to aid in initial acceleration when towing. The other big benefit are the taller rear differential ratios you get, which helps lower engine speeds on the highway for improved overall economy. It's still routed through a traditional column shift, which frees up the center console a good bit. Manual shiftability is routed through the leather clad column, in addition to a tow haul mode, which raises the transmission shift points, keeping the vehicle more in its power band during towing for better performance. The transmission does its job as expected, delivering smooth power and transitions. You don't notice much engine noise as everything up front is pretty well insulated. As with the new 5.3 liter V8, the engine seems quieter than before, losing a bit of its muscular growl, again leading to a quieter vehicle. I haven't driven the 2015 Escalade with the 6-speed, but at least comparing it to the 6-speed in the 3rd gen, the new offering feels snappier than before, not just because there was a big bump in torque, but the Escalade seems more eager to get up and go, accompanied by subtle engine burble. The manual shifting is responsive enough to be used when towing and on steep grades, but it doesn't really add to an extra performance dimension or anything like that as gear changes don't seem to occur any quicker. One of the newest pieces of tech for 2015 is a reconfigurable 12.3 inch LCD TFT instrument cluster. The digital system, unlike an analog gauge, actually incorporates different display modes that you can customize in addition to your driver information system and other media and infotainment features. It's all routed through the little button stack on the right hand side spoke of the steering wheel, left, right, up and down, and a select button. Clicking left or right highlights the specific menus and then you can go up or down to go between the different sub-menus. Clicking the arrow button all the way to the top and then pressing select will enter the vehicle information system, where it has fuel data, cruise information, battery voltage, and various status gauges such as your oil life, engine hours, tire pressure monitoring system, and a blank page. Clicking the arrow to the right and highlighting the speedometer, you can also customize what shows up in the middle portion. Access settings, display your navigation direction, digital speed readout, and then back to the traditional needle. If you go back to the settings, those are all of the personalizable options for the system. You can change the display layout, change the units, and access info pages. So like your trip computer, fuel range, instantaneous economy, all that kind of stuff can display in that section. By going back to display layout, that's where everything gets a little more customizable and pretty cool. There's four different display modes. You have simple, enhanced, balanced, and performance is what we're on right now. If we go to the option and select, it'll bring up whichever display mode that you want. So this particular one is balanced, accented by blue gauges. Yeah, I mean, it's a very simple layout. It's a little less aggressive than the performance screen. Simple is best just for, well, simple viewing. You have a digital speed readout on the top, you have your fuel to the right, Bluetooth and other customizable menus to the left. Enhanced is just a little bit more detail, but still on the simple side compared to the other two menus. It's a slightly different style overall, but it's still pretty simple. And then back to performance. But those are all the basic features of the reconfigurable instrument cluster standard in all 2015 Escalades. And so, we're gonna flip on the automatic LED headlamps and the hazards. Both the front windows are fully automatic, while the rear two windows are automatic down, with laminated glass for better safety and noise isolation. So, let's go and check out the exterior. You'll also notice the vehicle will chime a few times, letting you notice loss detection of the proximity key fob. 
May I present the all-new Escalade for 1999, Cadillac's first entry into the rapidly growing luxury SUV segment. Alongside the GMC Yukon Denali, they were GM's answers to the highly successful Lincoln Navigator. Based heavily on the Chevrolet Tahoe, there wasn't much to differentiate the Cadillac from its lesser brethren, let alone the Denali as the vehicles were nearly identical. Of course, the Denali and Escalade both shared fancier appointments, upgraded leathers, wood trim, and more refined body styling. But looking back, it's no surprise they were only produced between 1999 and 2000, as the aging platforms gave way to far more modern and unique designs over the following years. It's true, a lot can change over the years, about 15 years to be exact. Now, launching as the all-new fourth generation Escalade for 2015, Cadillac dares to reinvent the segment with a vehicle so closely tied to their latest designs, heritage, and improved quality, you'd be quite misinformed to think it's just another rebadged Tahoe. So let's run through a summary of changes. The new Escalade, like its corporate stablemates, is built using traditional body-on-frame construction. The powertrain is bolted to a fully boxed frame composed of more than 75% high strength steel. The benefit? Having the ability to tow upwards of 8,300 pounds and hold a payload of just over 1,500 pounds depending on wheelbase and drivetrain. The Avalanche based EXT has been dropped, so the lineup has been reduced to include just the standard wheelbase and extended length ESV. For those needing the extra cargo capacity, the ESV benefits from an extra 14 inches of wheelbase and a 20 inch increase in overall length. We'll talk more about cargo space though later in the video. It's a slightly larger vehicle than before with an increase of 1.4 inches in length and 1.5 inches in width. It's also about 100 pounds heavier. Interior space improves a good bit and the rear doors feature wider openings for easier ingress and egress. A whole host of chassis and suspension improvements create one of the smoothest riding, easier handling Escalades to date. For starters, it has a larger footprint out back thanks to a nearly 2 inch wider track. Cadillac claims improved steering precision is partly due to a new cross-axis ball joint on the frame side of the rear suspension lateral link. Sheer style body mounts reduce the typical chassis shutter common to body on frame vehicles, enhancing stiffness, damper performance, and the feeling of solidity over bumps and rough pavement. The biggest advancement in ride quality are the standard magnetorological adaptive shock absorbers, optional on the Tahoe and Yukon. Featuring a new dual electric coil design, it allows for near instantaneous shock adaptation for varying road conditions to help maintain a steady ride. Two driver adjustable modes, Tour and Sport, allow for either a more comfortable or dynamic oriented stiffer ride on demand. Unlike the third generation, the newest Escalade no longer comes standard with all-wheel drive. It's available with either two-wheel drive or multi-mode four-wheel drive with a two-speed transfer case. An automatic locking rear differential is standard which yields improved traction in slippery conditions. Styling is one of the Escalade's biggest departures over its predecessors. It's far more refined and well thought out, displaying unique Cadillac cues that create a bold and distinct package that's unmistakably Escalade. The sculpted sheet metal is exciting and more mature. Plentiful combinations of body creases and curves create a level of eye candy that you wouldn't typically associate with something of this class. Helping decrease overall weight gain is an aluminum hood and lift gate. Up front, you'll likely notice a redesigned emblem. Cadillac is slowly migrating to a new shield style they claim is more streamlined with the art and science design philosophy. It's a bit slimmer and elongated but retains the familiar shape. This was performed as a mid-year update, which is why you see earlier 2015 Escalades that still wear the wreath and crest. On another interesting note, the outline of the grille and the way it projects out is actually designed to coincide with the shape of the new emblem. Overall, the front end displays a greater level of dynamism and luxury, highlighted by the use of Galvano Chrome, a first for Escalade. Galvano Chrome has the look of brushed aluminum or perhaps a satin finished chrome splashed throughout including the massive grille, lower fascia inserts, side profile, window surrounds, and rear lift gate. It's quite a neat material up close and really adds to a heightened level of sophistication and modernism in my eyes versus the use of mirror quality chrome. The stunning lighting elements all incorporate LEDs and take inspiration from urban skyscrapers and the vertical lamps of the past. The headlamps extend back into the fenders as seen with other new Cadillacs embossed with the Cadillac script on top. 
they also feature the first total internal reflection LED high beams, consisting of four vertically stacked crystal lenses, with five crystal lenses for the low beams. The huge rear tail lamps are by far my favorite, outlined in black trim for dramatic effect. All in all, there are 142 LEDs providing illumination, 17 in each headlamp, 7 for each lower fascia lamp, 29 for each tail lamp, and 36 for the high mounted third brake light. Across the sides, chrome accented running boards are standard, with power retractable units being available in upper trim levels. Aiding towards a quieter ride are new inlaid triple sealed doors. Also seen with the Tahoe and Yukon, they fit into the body rather than rolling over the top, which really decreases wind noise for a quieter interior, not to mention improve aerodynamics and decrease drag. Out back, a power lift gate with foot sensor below allows hands-free operation for both opening and closing. A spoiler up top even incorporates the rear wiper, so the glass and dominant strip of chrome can flow across uninterrupted. The Escalade comes standard with 20-inch aluminum alloy wheels, but as an option, standard on upper trim levels, you can go for a set of 22 by 9 inch alloys, like the example shown here. There are different styles depending on trim levels, and they're wrapped in 285-45 all-season tires. Road testing shows the Escalade can hold around 0.75 g of lateral acceleration. New felt liners also wrap all of the wheel wells, helping absorb excess road noise. The Escalade stops from 60 miles an hour and around 130 feet thanks to four wheel internally ventilated disc brakes, measuring 13 by 1.2 inches in front and 13.6 by 0.8 inches in the rear. They're clamped by two piston and single piston sliding calipers respectively. The Duralife rotors are designed to resist premature rust and eliminate steering shutter under hard braking thanks to a new process called ferritic nitrocarburizing, which hardens the rotor surface. As far as the suspension, in addition to the self-leveling magnetorological shock absorbers, you have independent double wishbones up front with a traditional solid axle 5 link setup in the rear. Revised components help improve ride quality in addition to front and rear hollow stabilizer bars. Dimensions for the short wheelbase Escalade is a length of 203.9 inches, width of 80.5 inches, and a height of 74.4 inches, running on a 116 inch wheelbase. Total curb weight ranges between 5,500 and 5,800 pounds between two wheel drive and four wheel drive models. The fourth generation Escalade continues with a 6.2 liter small block V8, but it's an all new mill part of GM's latest Ecotec 3 engine family. Notice the Vortec name has been dropped. This means that, while the Escalade does get a good bump in power, it also is significantly more fuel efficient thanks to three new technologies, direct injection, cylinder deactivation, and variable valve timing, making it one of the most fuel efficient vehicles of its class. Of course, these bits of tech aren't revolutionary in the automotive world, but they do boost economy ratings by 17% compared to the previous model, especially through cylinder deactivation, which allows the Escalade to run on four cylinders when full power isn't needed. Even with all this new tech, the V8 keeps the traditional overhead valve pushrod design with two valves per cylinder, compression ratio of 11.5 to 1, and a maximum engine speed of 6,000 RPM. It develops 420 horsepower at 5,600 RPM and 460 pound-feet of torque at 4,100 RPM, representing an increase of 17 horsepower and 43 pound-feet of torque, yielding a 0-60 to time in just under 6 seconds. Pretty good for such a massive vehicle. As far as economy, the short wheelbase Escalade carries a 26-gallon fuel tank, while the ESV features a larger 31-gallon tank, in addition to capless filler systems. Two-wheel drive models are estimated to have a range of 15 miles to a gallon in the city and 21 on the highway. Four-wheel drive models are about a mile less in both ratings. Inside is where the Escalade really breaks new ground. I'll admit, I always liked the interior of the third generation. It was by no means perfect, but it was definitely a cool layout. For 2015, Cadillac bestows the Escalade with one of their most luxurious passenger compartments to date. Not only for the immense level of standard safety and comfort features, but its overall build quality and impressive use of premium materials. You'd be hard pressed to find any surface that isn't wrapped in some sort of premium material or hand stitched leather. The doors feature a two tone combination in this particular vehicle, and like the dash, it's bespoke to the Escalade, so all of these styling elements that you've seen are not transferable to the Yukon or the Tahoe, which gives it a little bit of an air of exclusivity. And of course, there's plenty of storage found throughout. 
The cut and sewn leather is all hand tailored with high attention to detail, including the seats, which incorporate V-shaped creases to coincide with the chrome pendants on the upper backrest. They're quite comfy and give good lateral support in addition to four-way power lumbar. With the luxury collection at above, the driver's seat features a built-in safety alert system that sends vibrations through the bottom cushion. It can vibrate to the left, right, or both sides depending on the direction of the alert from the various safety systems, such as forward collision alert, lane departure warning, lane change assist, rear cross-traffic alert, and adaptive cruise. In addition to front seat center airbags and knee airbags for better protection, there's also a host of new anti-theft technology making the vehicles much more secure. I also love how Cadillac is using mixed media throughout the interiors. Specifically with the dash, it kind of takes a layered design inspiration, so to speak. The lower sides and upper portion are of course all wrapped in stitched pattern material, but throughout you have soft Alcantara, the Galvano Chrome, and high gloss wood veneers. The environment is very unique, it's almost untruck like and more like an XTS or a CTS. So let's go ahead and see if she sounds. So let's go ahead and shut her up. Good tight, solid feeling panels. The Escalade comes standard with a premium Bose 16 speaker center point surround sound system with unique audio pilot technology that works to cancel out exterior noise to help quiet in the interior. All of that media and entertainment is routed through the Cadillac Q infotainment system, otherwise known as Cadillac User Experience, an 8-inch touchscreen that incorporates haptic feedback and a whole host of features. We'll talk about all of those features and how to go through them in just a bit. This vehicle is in demonstration mode, connected by OnStar's high-speed 4G connection. Press the blue OnStar button to learn more. Cloth wrapped eight pillars with side curtain airbags, grip handles up top, and Bluetooth microphones located on either side so the passengers can be heard equally. There's also another microphone up top that goes with the Bose Audio Pilot system to help quieten the ride like I talked about earlier. Cloth wrapped visors with LED illumination and vanity mirrors. The microphone just ahead of the visor corresponds to the Audio Pilot system. Auto dimming rear view mirror with OnStar controls underneath. Up in the top stack, you have the controls for your interior illumination, as well as LED reading lamps, three-position garage home link, power rear lift gate, as well as your sunroof controls, both tilting and sliding. An extra security feature is the motion sensor. When activated, if you have the windows rolled down and the vehicle locked, if somebody reaches in, it'll sound the alarm. Otherwise, if somebody breaks the glass, it'll also sound the alarm. The Cadillac Q system is new to the Escalade, but it's been in the Cadillac fleet now for a few years. It incorporates an entire touch-sensitive layout, so everything from up top and down below, including the climate controls, are all touch-sensitive. It sends out a little vibration or haptic feedback when you make the appropriate selection. You can sort of loosely associate the Q system with the Chevrolet MyLink or the GMC IntelliLink, but those systems incorporate more traditional buttons and whatnot versus the all-touch-sensitive Q system. One thing that is shared between them, or some sort of variation, is the hidden storage compartment, yielding a secure storage area that you can also put a phone or iPod and plug it into the illuminated USB port. The cool thing with the Q system it takes just a little bit to get used to is that it incorporates many of the same features and functionality that you would find in your smartphone or tablet, including swiping, pinching, scrolling, and more. 
Of course, those actions depend on which menu that you're in, such as the audio screen, you have an expandable preset area. There's also quite an elaborate voice recognition system. Say an audio command. Help. To tune to a radio station, say the command tune, followed by an AM or FM station number, or an XM channel name or number. You can also choose audio from your media by saying the command play followed by a genre, playlist, artist, album, or song name. Or, to hear more options, you can say radio or my media. Cancel. Goodbye. In the main audio screen, you can access your different media devices such as hands-free Bluetooth streaming, iPod, auxiliary integration, USB input, auxiliary input, and I believe SD card input. There's a lot of different flexibility. Not to mention a menu function to the far right where you can access your tone, shuffle, turn on the Bose audio pilot. With tone, it's pretty self-explanatory. You can locate the sound in different areas of the vehicle and adapt your equalizer functions. Simply selecting radio will allow you to go between FM, HD radio, AM, as well as satellite radio. You can browse the available stations, check XM channels, categories, artists, and more. With the hard drive built into the queue system, you can also pause and rewind live radio. As you listen to a station, it automatically starts recording some, so if you want to double back and listen to a part, it's done with an ease. At the top of the screen you have your outside temperature and digital clock, in addition to four shortcut keys for your audio, telephone, navigation, and climate control. Back in the home screen, check out Bluetooth telephone, you can store contacts, voice dial, dial from the system, and check paired devices. It'll automatically ask you to pair a phone if you don't have one already connected. As far as the navigation screen, a nice high-res display and actually has a little Escalade down there. Zoom in and out, destination, menu, settings are all located in the bottom there. You can even pull in addresses from your contact list. Let the screen idle for a second and the menus will disappear yielding a full screen map. Then just swipe your hand in front and a motion sensor will automatically bring the menus back. Going back to our home screen in the top right hand corner you have the system settings where you can customize various aspects and features of the vehicle. Again, swipe it across the screen just like you would on a tablet. The main menu is totally customizable. You have Pandora internet radio as well as real time weather updates. An interactive weather map up top not to mention extended, hourly and daily forecasts. Selecting the menu button will automatically bring up options for your weather advisories, weather alerts and map legend. Selecting climate brings up your full climate control system up in the queue system, so really you can control every aspect of the system either from the screen or in the controls down below which I'll show you in just a second. It comes standard with a three zone climate control so you have independent adjustments for both the driver and passenger as well as independent adjustment for the rear passengers. The system's even capable of sending messages. But in a nutshell, those are all the basic features of the Q system available in the newest generation Cadillacs. The center stack is all accented in high gloss black trim and a slender strip of Galvano chrome. To the left you have three touch sensitive buttons for your power pedal adjust and adaptive dampers. The right hand side houses your glove box, parking sensors, lane keep and assist or lane departure warning as well as your traction control. Like I briefly touched on earlier, below the Q system you have all of your climate control settings. They're all touch sensitive and feature the same haptic feedback mechanism that you get with the screen. The little silver accents aren't buttons but they're merely finger guides so if you're driving down the road, it makes it a lot easier to find the appropriate selection. Just tap and the controls activates the feature unless you're on the volume which you would just swipe left and right. The left hand and right hand side also houses your three stage heated and ventilated seats as standard equipment on every Escalade. Continuing down the center console, it's outlined in soft padded leather trim. In addition to the center console, it also features a wireless phone charger built in. High gloss wood veneer provides some covers for a little cubby up front that houses two USB ports and a 12 volt power outlet. It's also lined in felt. The back one is a flip up storage for cup holders. Within the cavernous center console, 
You have a felt line storage compartment, illuminated by LEDs, another 12 volt power outlet there, and some additional ports over here for an SD card, auxiliary and P3 input, and two additional USB ports. As far as the steering wheel, the right hand side houses your radio controls and driver information system. The driver information system like we touched on earlier is routed through this button right here that you can toggle up, down, left and right, pushing in to select an option all corresponding to the various features and functions of the TFT display. The left hand side is your hands-free telephone and voice commands, not to mention your heated steering wheel activation, and forward collision assist, where you can program the distance or turn it off. The left hand side also houses your cruise control and another little toggle switch, so turning off or on your cruise control, set, resume, accelerate, decelerate. On the left hand side of the instrument cluster are the controls for the customizable heads up display that's beamed directly onto the windshield. You can not only raise and lower it, but change the brightness, in addition to changing the different content, speed limit, media, direction, and a tachometer. As in typical General Motors fashion, the left hand side stalk packs a ton of different features such as your rear wipers that are concealed in the back like I showed you earlier automatic rain sensing windshield wipers, mist function, turn signals, and high beams. Alrighty. We'll go ahead and shut her down. And check out the back seat. Second row passengers are treated with a comparable level of luxury like you would find in the front, including the same high grade leather and standard heated seats. The door panels continue the bespoke Escalade design incorporating leathers, Alcantara, and wood, not to mention plenty of storage and integrated drink holders up top. Everything feels soft and supple to the touch and tailored with double stitching. For added comfort and enjoyment on longer trips, a Blu-ray rear entertainment system is even available. The seating surfaces emulate a similar style like you would find in the front with the tufted side bolsters and the little V-shaped accents coming across the middle. Depending on your level of passenger hauling needs, the Escalade can also be had with either a split captain's row chair seating like you see here, or in a full bench seat for the second row. They are adjustable so you can recline them back, kick back, and relax. A power folding mechanism can be used to fold and tumble the seat to make getting in and out of the back seat a little bit easier. I don't know if it's just me or not, but the interior packaging for the third row seat seems to be improved. There's a pretty good amount of headroom. Leg room is only where it gets to be of a pinch, so third row passengers are most likely going to be children or smaller individuals. I did cover backseat room a little bit more in depth during my review of the 2015 Tahoe LTZ, so if you want to see how my 5'10 frame fits in both the third row and the second row, check out the link in the bottom of this video or in the description box below to be taken to that video. In the bottom of the console you have a 12 volt power outlet, AC outlet, climate control, and a bit of storage. And up in the headliner there's plenty of LED illumination and air vents. Out back, the Escalade features a hands-free operating lift gate. It works via proximity sensors, so by simply walking up to it and kicking your foot underneath while having the key fob on you, you're able to not only open it, but close it as well. Of course, you're still able to use the key fob in addition to a black button on the lift gate to close it. If needed, you can raise the rear glass for added cargo clearance. As far as storage area, behind the third row, it actually decreases a little bit for 2015 due to that new raised floor, which was done to have the ability to have fold flat seating for extra overall space. You don't have to take out seats or anything like that to gain the maximum amount of cargo area. Thankfully, there is a bit of cargo space underneath that floorboard. In the standard wheelbase Escalade, behind the third row seat, there's 15.2 cubic feet of storage. Behind the second row, you have 51.5 cubic feet, and then fold down both the third and second row seating via the power controls in the back, and it jumps to 94.2 cubic feet in total. With the ESV, space increases substantially to 39.3 cubic feet behind the third row, 76.7 cubic feet behind the second row, and a total of 120.9 cubic feet with all of the seats folded down. The storage space underneath the floor also gets substantially bigger with gas charge struts to prop it up.
The passenger seat features the same power adjustments that you find in the driver's seat. Like you saw earlier, your electronic glove box, all lined in velour, and a good amount of space. Ever since its 1999 debut, the Escalade has been one of the cornerstones of full-size American luxury. With the capabilities of a full-size truck, it still offers quite an advantage when it comes to its towing and hauling abilities. Cadillac did a stand-up job with the all-new Escalade, once again redefining a segment and an American icon. Well everyone, I hope you enjoyed the in-depth look at the all-new 2015 Cadillac Escalade. Be sure to stay tuned next time, there's a lot more where that came from. Take care everybody.